Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of My First 3D Printer, I'm going to cover out a little bit how does the 3D printer actually work. Now, I'm not going to go into deep detail, but I'm going to share enough with you to help you make your first purchase. So, in short, there are several different types of 3D printers. There's the Cartesian printer, which this one is one. And being a Cartesian printer, it has an X, Y, and Z axis. So, the bed moves in the Y axis in this case. The head moves in the x-axis and this whole carriage moves up and down in z so again y x and z goes up and down now that's powered by um, three stepper motors look like this in this case they're a little bit smaller in this unit this is the mountain price mini select highly recommend it and these are all controlled by a small microprocessor similar to this inside the unit along with stepper controllers that make all the motion happen. Now there's a couple other types of printers out there. There's delta printers and there's also circular printers. I highly recommend starting with a Cartesian printer. Uh, it's going to be the easiest, most logical to get you started. Uh, now aside from the type of printer that we have being Cartesian, we have a couple other feed mechanisms. Now these feed mechanisms are important. This happens to be a Bowden uh, based printer. Now, Bowden based printer means that the extruder, which is up here, is separated from the hot end down here. The alternatives are direct drives. Usually, direct drives are more expensive than the Bowden uh, type. And you'll probably be starting out with a Bowden type printer. So, it's kind of important to know how all this works. So, the extruder up here, if you will, is where you feed your filament plastic in. Now we talked about this in the first episode. Now the other piece is I want to talk a little bit, and I never covered this in the first one because I really want to just stick with PLA versus ABS. Uh, however, you have two different size filaments, uh, 1.7 millimeter and three, or approximately three millimeter. I highly recommend the 1.75 millimeter uh, base units. Most, probably 80%, are going to be the 1.75s. This is probably the most common filament you're going to find. Uh, most of the Alti makers in those are threes, but again, you'll probably come across the 1.75, and I highly suggest starting with 1.75 uh, millimeter filament. Now, what happens is, again, this filament feeds into here. Now, there's a stepper motor underneath here, and you can see the shaft here and the shaft here. This is the shaft of the motor. There's a cog here that, that latches on or uh, well, pushes this filament into this Bowden tube that you see right here that runs down, and I'll move the printer in a second to show you a little bit more, into the hot end. And this cog has teeth in it, and what happens is it digs into the filament and it's of a specific diameter and a specific number of teeth. So it, the small computer here knows how much filament to push for each slice as it goes around. Now, what happens is this pushes the filament down into a hot end down here. And it has a, both the combination layer cooling fan and heat sink cooling fan. And this is what's referred to as the, the Bowden hot end. Now, what I'm gonna do is I have another one here. I'm gonna kinda show you, walk you through a little bit of it. Now, this is a larger, um, uh, hot end for basically what you'll see on a normal printer. Again, this is a small guy. And so what you have down here, and I'm going to start backwards and work my way up, but you have a nozzle, and this is typically you're going to want to look for, a, you know, a 0.4 inch nozzle. And it's a good starting size, and this nozzle is really what does most of the work. There's a very tiny hole in the end, and so what happens is this 1.75 millimeter filament comes in, and is pushed out at 0.4 millimeters into a slice and it lays down that slice. Now the way this works is this is a heat block and what you have is you have this ceramic heater which is inserts into here and this gets hot. Power is applied to this and it becomes very hot. Heats this up and melts the plastic. Now very important piece if the plastic just melted throughout this whole thing you could never push the plastic out. So very important part is there's a heat break inside here and that's why you have these fins so you do not want the filament to melt until the very last um, end of this and, you know when it hits the nozzle or into this um, heat block so this is why you have this cooling fan here 
to keep these fins cool. So you want to have this heat break so hot down here, cool up here. And so when it comes down here, the filament pushes through, hits this uh, hot end, gets melted, is extruded out the end, makes your piece. This other wire that you see here, this is a thermocouple or thermal resistor. This provides feedback to this little computer of the temperature. So this helps maintain a correct temperature for the filament to melt properly as it's coming through here. So very important. It creates a temperature feedback loop. Same thing for the heated bed, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So this is the, the structure, how it works. Now the other piece I did mention here is this also has acts as a layer cooling fan and for PLA uh, that's one of the things you'll want is layer cooling so this fan does double duty and that's why it's a little bit large is it cools not only the heat sink of the Bowden extruder but it also as you can see down here will blow on the print now this is needed for PLA not really ABS or many other plastics but definitely PLA you want that layer to cool so it, it comes it adheres and it doesn't really squish down anymore uh, to the other piece so kind of look for that it's kind of an important piece having a layer fan as well as a cooling fan some printers have them some printers don't and definitely uh, again as I covered out in the first video I highly recommend starting with PLA and having some form of PLA layer fan is very important so basically this is how a 3d printer works and then obviously you have your bed here now in this case this is also a heated bed uh, you don't need a lot of heat for PLA uh, as we spoke with um, ABS you do need a lot of heat very important uh, I print mainly just PLA on this. You could do some smaller ABS parts on here if you wanted. Um, but, I, you know, again, 99% of my work is PLA. And again, the same thing with the feedback temperature loop that this controller controls holds true for the bed. So you, so you set a temperature for the bed. You set a temperature for the hot end. You slice this in a slicer, and it prints out in layers on here. Actually, it's pretty simple how this whole thing works. So... Uh, hopefully I've kind of shared a little bit of uh, you know helped you have a little bit better understanding how a 3d printer works in some basic terms in the next episode we'll probably take a look at bed adhesion because after you get this far what the next important thing is is actually getting it to stick on this bed so hopefully this helped you making some decisions I'll have some recommended printers down below in the in the uh, description section if you're interested and hey if this helped you give it a thumbs up don't forget swag shop up there great holiday gifts and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button put out content on a regular basis and as always hit me up for questions below cheers and see you in the next video on all of our projects.